Even though the World Cup is fast approaching, Epic Games has already begun experimenting with new formats for their upcoming tournaments. One of those modes is trios. <laughs> wow. And while most of us are still trying to figure out how we're going to even handle this mode, there's already a bunch of pros emerging as some of the most talented trios in the game. And this not only made us wonder, why can't I be good enough to win $1 million playing Fortnite? Why? But which of these trios are the best? Oh, and uh, by the way, we can't promise $1 million, so don't come looking for Keith Allen. Okay, don't, don't do that. <laughs> but we can promise that you'll become much better at Fortnite if you check out Instapro. Instapro is amazing. You're going to be practicing with some of the best coaches in the game. Well, anyways, this is your guy, once again, Keith Allen, coming at you with another Pro Guides video. And today, we're going to be going over the top five trio teams we think deserve your attention, okay? We're also going to be looking at teams that did well in the last two recent trios tourneys, as well as those with players that have done well historically across other competitions. You know, a lot of pro players haven't fully decided on who their teammates are, and we're still seeing changes being made all the time. But that's just Fortnite for you guys. <laughs> You're used to it by now. In fact, hey, we all love it. We embrace it. So let's check out the teams. You ready? Let's do it. All right, so first we have Click, Sway, and Tifu. Wow. They had 9th and 17th play finishes, respectively, in the first two Trio Cups. When you consider the fact they just somewhat recently started playing together, those results are pretty great. Still, this trio has gotten a lot of criticism by the community. Fans of Tifu are especially worried that Clicks and Sway just aren't experienced or composed enough to compete. One Reddit user even said that Tifu's trio is like watching a dad trying to take care of his kids. <laughs> I mean, that's funny, but it's also somewhat true. Still, you know, through all those moments that just make us ask why, we admittedly see the possibilities. So, to discredit this team and put the blame on Sway and Clicks also put some of the blame on Tifu. He left 72 hours in closely for these guys, okay? Likely because he saw something in them. And surely we can have some faith in his decision making, right? With some more time, we think this trio is going to start winning big. And as of right now, hey, they have some teamwork problems and they just need to iron it out. But even with those issues, they did extremely well in both tournaments so far. And we know the individual strengths of each player is up there as well. Clicks and Tifu are both solo World Cup qualifiers. And while Sway didn't qualify, he's known as a creative god who can hold his own against anyone. And his recent results in these cups and the Fortnite Friday tourneys have shown the world that he can hang with two of the best. The potential is definitely there with this team. Look at it. They just need to work on reaching it. With some amazing results in the recent trio's cups, Zexro, Macwood, and Yug Calculator are next on our list. These guys displayed an impressive performance in these first two tourneys, grabbing seventh place in both of them. Macwood and Young Calculator, which is a pretty funny name by the way, <laughs> managed to qualify for the World Cup in the first week they played together. Okay, that's just insane. Up until last week of qualifiers, both of these guys have been doing duels with other players. And while they each had some good results, they must have thought they could do better together. We're not sure how these two found each other, but what a pair. The synergy on these guys is pretty great, and it showed with their immediate success. For having less practice time together than a large majority of qualified duos, it should be interesting to see how they do at the World Cup. Now, they paired up with veteran Zexro, who we all pretty much know at this point. The TSM member made a name for himself relatively early in the Fortnite scene, first by getting first place in a fall skirmish week. His next big success was at Fortnite's biggest LAN event yet at the time, SwitchCon. He and his partner Vinny got third place there, bringing home over 150 grand. So, when you're known for having crazy good aim, the last thing that you want is to injure your wrist. <laughs> but that's exactly what happened to Zexro. And there was honestly a moment where people were worried if Zexro would even be able to compete again. It seems as though his wrist problems have thankfully gotten better since then. He was able to grab a spot for the World Cup in the last week of the qualifiers with his partner Vinny. Now he's sharing his expertise in the game leadership with Young Kalp and Macwood. Watching these guys play, Zexro does a really good job of leading the team, planning rotates, and we all think that's a huge part of the team's success. Have you ever tried to play Fortnite with an injury? Whew. Definitely let us know below. Mad respect. Zexro showed that injury who's boss and made one of the best comebacks we've ever seen so far in competitive Fortnite. Now, we're really excited to see where this team is going. Okay, so Benji Fishy and Mr. Savage were one of the world's best duos during the World Cup, getting multiple top three placements, including a first place finish. You could also say that they were both some of the best solo players too, since they both qualified for that event as well. All right, let me ask you this. What happens when you take those two World Cup qualifiers and then add them to one of the most mechanically skilled and tournament experienced individuals? One who also qualified for both World Cup events. You get one of the best teams you could possibly form. That's what you get. 
All right, seriously, just to talk about Mongrel real quick, he has been competing in tournaments for over a year now, going all the way back to the early Fortnite Friday events. He has everything from solo, duo, and squad experience. So he's familiar with playing in a team setting and with playing under pressure. That tournament experience is something we think deserves more credit when talking about his potential. As of writing this video, the World Cup has almost begun. As we all know, okay, Mongrel is one of the favorites to win it all. Part of that is because maybe with all that tournament experience, people just know that he could just show up when it's most needed. Benji and Mr. Savage have been doing this for a while now, and it didn't take them long at all to find immediate success. In their first event together, which had a small 1,000 euro prize pool, they managed to grab first place, <laughs> beating out other top EU duels like E11, Boyer, and Krippa, and Salaries, Hunter, and Kinstar. With dramatic results like that, it's no surprise they've been doing and winning together ever since. So, in the recent trios tourneys, they placed 38th place the first week, which isn't too bad at all, and they played that on their regular European server. With all three players in New York preparing for the World Cup, they played the single day cash cup on NAE servers. This server was full of pro players thanks to the World Cup, so it was arguably much harder than the other regionals at the time. And with that, our trio here, still probably suffering from jet lag, <laughs> managed to get a ninth place finish. Not too bad. With how good this team is on paper, we're expecting so much better results in upcoming events. Not only are all these players practicing solos for the World Cup, but Mongrel also has to practice with his duo partner Mitro. Such crazy schedules and having to practice for so many different things may have put a hamper on their performance in these recent trio tournaments. But once all that's over, whew, we're expecting these guys to do much better after they spend more time playing with each other. Our next team, ladies and gentlemen, has gotten easily the best trio results so far, grabbing fifth and first place finishes in the first two big events. Okay, so remember, we said that NA East was stacked with pro players in the second week, and these guys were able to place first. The performance needed to pull that off was next level. And there were some moments throughout these cups. When all seems lost, they managed to pull themselves together and clutch up. You could just tell how passionate these guys are about the game, just watching them play. Combined with their ability to just stay calm and collected. Man, much props, man. These guys are able to focus on a goal like no other. Only Aspect and Bugha qualified individually for the World Cup solos. While other rosters may be stacked with more World Cup qualifiers, they haven't been able to show Trio's results like these Sentinels boys. Guess that shows that you can still be a top pro player even if you didn't qualify for Worlds. Bugha, with his recent results, has proven to be simply one of the best individual players out there, man, hands down. He grabbed first place and immediately qualified for solos in week one, and is considered a solid bet for bringing home the big prize. Known for his methodical and calculated plays, I mean, he's been slaying out these trail events. He's even won a recent Fortnite Friday with clicks, showing that no matter the play style, man, the dude can perform. For a player that's young and on the come up, Bugha has, by far, some of the most impressive results we've seen. Being a trio with every member a part of the same organization is a rare thing right now. Players are trying to form their best rosters with what's available, and a lot of the time, players on the same team are on separate orgs. Being on the same org, the Sentinels can hopefully facilitate a gaming house or other ways that can help this team grow. Team houses and boot camps are definitely capable of helping a team improve in esports. That's an area the other rosters on our list may have a disadvantage in. Since they're all on the same org, that's something that can definitely be easily done. Animal and Aspect are dual partners as well, and had some pretty good results in the World Cup qualifiers, but unfortunately, while they were super close in the last week, they weren't even able to qualify for New York together. Still, we're talking about a couple of players that have been involved in the scene since nearly the beginning. Animal, Aspect, Baha, Screaming Together goes way back to the Fortnite Pro League days. There were so many good placements by these guys in the World Cup warm-up, the Lux Cup, the Scallywag Cup, and other past events. Their level of play has always been considered top-notch, and their recent results definitely support that. After the World Cup ends, prepare to see these guys start consistently placing top 10 in trio events. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, for the team we think is going to start winning it all, we've got Zay, Sap, and my boy, Bizzle. Historically, these guys have some of the best placements in major tournaments. And so far, hey, they won the first week in Cash Cup and got 10th place in a single day Cash Cup. While their combined records for those two trio tourneys aren't as good as the Sentinels, the players in this trio simply have better overall tournament results and more experience playing in major events. The decision making and mechanics displayed by this trio are still top notch. Zayd and Saf have been teaming together for over a year and even qualified for the World Cup together. They're just both really familiar with each other's play styles, communication, and able to play off each other extremely well. 
Then, you add Bizzle into the mix, in terms of past performances, he literally has one of the best records out there, earning more money than any other player from tournaments. Even though he hasn't been playing with his teammates here as long as some other trios, Bizzle fits in this as if they've been together for months. Being considered one of the best individual Fortnite players of all time, okay, an innovator, and a clutch master, he could probably fit in with nearly every roster out there, okay? The guy is just that good. Choosing to partner up with two other really experienced and skilled pros like Zayden Saf, whew, man, this makes one of the best choices he could ever make. These guys have been scrimming since near the beginning, when the pro scene was mostly playing squads. Even though the game feels completely different since then, that combined scrim and tournament experience stands out alone. You can just tell how good they work together when you watch, and it doesn't really look like they're slowing down anytime soon. With such a long and consistent track record, we just can't see how this trio is going to lose their position at the top anytime soon. I don't know about you guys, but we're super excited about the new trios mode. Some of the rosters we're seeing have just crazy potential. And if you're excited about trios too, you should definitely be checking out those teams if you haven't already. With a good enough reception to the game mode, which looks like the case so far, we're probably going to see the next big World Cup size event host a trio series. What trio teams have you guys been rooting for so far? Drop your answer down in the comment section. Once again, this is your guy, Keith Allen. Been having some awesome convos with you guys. Hey, don't miss out. Follow me as soon as you can. And we got a new something coming out for you guys all the time here at Pro Guides. Stay tuned.